Good morning. Welcome to the Hillbilly RV channel. If you're new here, I am a hillbilly. I am in southern West Virginia and I work on RVs. Hence the name Hillbilly RV. And if you're a returning uh, guest, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, means a lot to me. It really does. And uh, more and more people are watching my videos lately. So appreciate that. Uh, this morning we are at the Tamarack here in Beckley, West Virginia. It is the it is the best of West Virginia, whatever that means. And uh, we are here working on an oldie but a goodie. It is a Monaco coach. Uh, it is a dynasty. And uh, the gentleman is having trouble with his inverter. Uh, apparently it is charging the batteries, so the converter part is working, but he can't get any AC power from the batteries. And he's uh, getting ready to go up to a ball game so he's going to be dry camped and he'd really like his inverter to work so um, can we fix it today i don't know can we diagnose it i certainly hope so um, i did uh i did send bill hilly looking for the looking for the converter inverter and he hollered just now he said he found it so uh, let's go see what he found Hey, Bill Hilly, where you at, man? I'm right here, man. Right here, right here, right here. <sighs> well, how'd you get in there, man? I just shut the door. All right, well, looks like he did find the converter. It is a Xantrex, and it's a biggie. So, um, yeah, let's get started. We're just doing our thing. All right, so here is the uh, here's the panel inside, and uh, let's see. So we're not plugged into the shore power right now, and it says it is charging. Well, maybe it's just going through some diagnostic stuff. So it says we've got 12 and a half volts in the batteries. An incoming AC says it's 5 amps and then the lights go out. So that's probably not a good sign. Huh. Yep, I don't think that's a good sign. Or do the lights just go out after a little bit? It's going to do the exact same thing. It's like it's, it's trying to figure out what it needs to do. But I don't think it's doing anything. The customer doesn't think it's doing anything either. Well, maybe it's time just going down there to the inverter and start doing some checking. Um, make sure we have our powers coming in. Uh, I will hook it up to my truck so we'll have AC power coming in. Um, so I have an inverter on my truck. Uh, just a small one. But um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go on down and start checking some powers, some inputs. See if we got DC power coming in. Uh, to invert and we have AC power coming in to convert Because this is gonna be an inverter converter So yeah, let's go do that All right, so we just started the generator and Our lights are staying on now. We did bump this power share up to 30 amps uh, And our lights are staying on now so, yeah, I think it's still time. Oh, I think it's still time to either go to the inverter converter and start checking some powers. I mean, it's, it says that we got an AC in light, so we're going to have to assume we do have AC power coming in. Um, and it says it is charging. So let's go, well, let's go see if it's charging. 
Uh, the gentleman did tell me he he wasn't sure it was charging, so he put a couple battery tenders on to uh, charge the coach batteries whenever he's uh, plugged in shore power or got the generator running. So we might just uh, see if we can unhook those real quick and see if it's at least converting. And then we'll see if it's inverting. All right, I got my meter hooked up to one of the coach batteries. We got 12.7. Um, so it's probably not charging. Um, I expect if we cut the generator off, it would probably still say 12.7. Does the generator start good when it's hot? Go ahead and cut it off. Well, we're just going to find out for sure. Let's cut the, uh, let's cut the generator off. You'll probably, there it is, it's off. So, it may have been providing very minimal charge. We're from 12.7 couple to 12.69. So. so yeah, it is not inverting or converting. So let's, uh, let's go over to the converter and uh, probably have to pull a couple of panels off to access inputs. Let's make sure we get our inputs. All right, I gotta have this cover off down here. That's where our AC inputs and outputs are. And there's, there's something that looks a little bit wonky. Uh, that's our DC power uh, coming in and out. And that, that one on the right looks wonky to me. So let's, uh, oh, let's start doing a little check in here. See what we see. Check our DC first. First glance, this looks like a pretty good place to work, but it's not as good as it looks. All right, that seems strange because I see some red tape on that wire over there. So I automatically assumed that was gonna be our hot one. Oh, well, let me hook my leads up right. Dummy. So 13.6, so we are, we are charging. So it's not making it back to the battery though. So I believe this is just a terminal block. So we're gonna have a breaker somewhere, probably around those batteries. So let's go, uh, let's go on the hunt for that. All right, so there was nothing behind the batteries. They're like right there. So we come in here to the engine compartment and here's all of our, here's our, our battery disconnect solenoid down there. I think these are gonna be breakers right here. A bunch of relays, another solenoid over here. So let's uh, start doing some checking. Now I'm just gonna have to set y'all up over here and uh, I'll try and show you what's going on. So it's caught a ground on the engine there. Let's just start checking some power. Uh, I believe this is probably going to be straight from the batteries. Well, if it is, there's nothing there. Or I don't have a ground. Uh, let me see if I can get a see if I can get a better ground, cleaner ground. Now what this blue thing is is a battery isolator. Um, uh, we see those, uh, what it does is it won't allow you to uh, 
it'll kind of tie the batteries together, the house and the coach. But it'll it kind of separates them, but it ties them together. But will it won't allow you to discharge the chassis batteries uh, to the point where you can't start the engine. Uh, it'll actually disconnect the batteries here and save your chassis batteries. Okay, well I either don't have a I must not have a ground because there ain't nothing here that's live. Find the ground. There we go. I didn't have a ground. So let's go back down here to the solenoid, I think. See, I think this is the, the batteries coming in 13.5. So we got power there. The other side of this solenoid, we got Zilcho. Okay. I'm going to ask the customer to go up front and uh, push that battery disconnect switch, turn it on and off two or three times. And we're going to listen and see if we hear this thing click, which I expect we're not. Okay, it did. All right, it's down here. Okay, hang on a minute. Turn it, turn it on. Here's our battery disconnect solenoid. I could hear it and I could feel it. So we got 13.4 on one side. 13.4 on the other side. So that is working. Okay. So what is this solenoid back here, I wonder? it is not it is not working so I think these are breakers they're good We've got a whole row of breakers here uh, I don't expect any of those are, uh, are an issue it's possible they look they look rough but I think our issue is this solenoid here 13.4 nothing well no everything's a little crowded here I'm having a hard time getting connections on this stuff 12.7 so we're losing a little bit of power across that, but not a crazy amount. Twelve seven. Okay, so now we have to try to figure out where power comes from here to go to the to the converter that may be a bigger ordeal because I honestly don't know where that power is going to come from And you know, this may not, the way I explained that battery disconnect, or this battery isolator may not be exactly how that works, because it does have the alternator coming up here. Maybe this is just how the engine will charge the house batteries. They, they can use these isolators several different ways. Um, yeah, maybe they're just using this to charge the house batteries from the engine when the engine is running. Um, we're going to have to see if this gentleman has uh, some of these old buses um, actually had schematics and we might have to try looking the books see if we can figure out where the power comes from here to the converter so 
let's go look at that and then I'll be right back all right folks uh, yeah we uh, we studied the schematics I think that this uh, they're calling it a fuse but it's probably a breaker or it could be a fuse uh, it's going back to the converter this looks like the wire that goes back to the converter this is our wire coming straight from our batteries which are right here um, and with the generator running we had 13 5 to 13 4 on everything here so now we cut the generator off so let's go back to the converter and see if we have DC power making it back to the converter if we do then the, the inverter side is probably just bad so let's uh, let's go check that real quick well, all right I don't remember exactly where I left off I know I was going to the converter to check power and we did have battery voltage uh, going into the converter and no AC power coming out I actually checked it right at the wire nuts inside the little connector box where the connections are made and it was uh, like 10 volts AC so I am 99.9% .9 sure that that converter is just bad which is sad that's not the original converter that one's not been in there that long and it is bad um, I mean we got we got proper amount of DC voltage coming in truck it's the only bad thing about working at Tamarack this truck's run up down this road all day uh, the uh, we got the correct DC power coming in we do have two flashing lights on the converter low battery which it's got 12.5 coming in that can't be that can't be low battery and uh, and another light I forget what it is I'll, I'll put it up here I'll watch the video and put it up here um, so yeah that's uh, that's it uh, tried to call Xantrex uh, I was fifth in queue was on the phone for 15 minutes and I was fourth in queue so I seen where that was going I don't have all day to sit here and wait for them to pick up the phone see if they had any ideas uh, left callback number they'll call back if they have any useful information I'll relay it to the customer but uh, other than that uh, that's gonna be it uh, so uh, don't want y'all relay some information get down in that comment section leave me a comment a criticism concern and um, I'm probably gonna go fix another one today and y'all have a fantastic day